Look at this, it's Stella. She's in the cat condo. She never goes in this cat condo. This is a first for her. Stella, Splash, Simba, Hydrox, Ditto, and Boo. The Lucky Pharaohs. It's 9.15 a.m. and here's Splash. He's under the bed. I wanted to film an update about him. The door to this room is shut, so he's the only cat in here. I want him to relax. He's been having issues this morning. So what I've been noticing is that he's been using the litter box a lot more than he usually does. So I started keeping track of how often he's using the litter box. And he was going to the litter box about every five minutes this morning. So once I noticed that, then I tried to isolate him with the litter box so I could see what he was doing. Now I didn't know if he was constipated or if he was having problems urinating, so... Um, the first thing that I did was I gave him a little squeeze up with some salmon oil on it, like some fish oil, because if he was constipated, I figured that can help move things along. The next thing that I did, I gave him a squeeze up with a little bit of CBD oil in it. The reason why I did that is because when Boo had the same exact symptoms, when Boo was going to the litter box every five minutes. It was due to stress because I took him to the vet at the time. The vet could not find anything. And so it was stress related. And Splash is dealing with a good deal of stress because all of the cats have been all together for the past several days. And we know Splash is very sensitive and he's one of the shy cats. So um, the stress would be affecting him more than the other cats. The other cats seem to be fine with everything right now, but Splash is a little bit stressed out. So that's why I gave him the CBD oil. So after he had that, he continued to use the litter box maybe every 10 minutes or so. I definitely felt like um, the frequency of him using it decreased a little bit. Then he took a poop, which was good, so we know he's not constipated. And then I was thinking... Um, I would put some apple cider vinegar in his food today, his breakfast, because apple cider vinegar is good for cats if they're having urinary issues. If they're having like a urinary infection, they say to put some apple cider vinegar in their food. But I didn't have any apple cider vinegar, so I had to run to Whole Foods and I picked some up and I just got back. I also bought him some food that has more liquid in it. I normally mix extra water into their food, but I bought some packets of wellness in gravy, um, hoping maybe he'll like that more. Uh, but for breakfast today, they're having homemade raw food and I'll, I'll mix plenty of water in with that and I'll put some apple cider vinegar in. He'll continue to stay isolated in this room so I can monitor his uh, litter box habits. I have a camera pointed at the litter box. I moved it to specifically point at the litter box so I can review the footage and see what's going on. And yeah, so that's what's going on with Splash this morning. I should also mention that otherwise he's acting completely normal. He's jumping on top of the cat tower. He is, you know, quite active. He's hiding right now because I have the camera out and he's quite shy when I want to do this. But other than that, he's been acting normal. If I leave the room, he comes out from under the bed. When I come in the room, he'll like look at me. But what happened was when I tried to point the camera at him, that's when he hid under the bed, so. It's 9.30 a.m. and this is what Splash is getting for breakfast. He's getting homemade raw food. And I mixed in one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar and I put a squeeze up on top and let's hope he eats this. I was just walking past the door to the room with the kittens and I was like, it looks like all the kittens are in the room. So I went in, shut the door, counted them. Sure enough, all seven are in the room. So I guess they put themselves in the room expecting breakfast. I just shut the door. I'm going to feed the other cats downstairs. Then I'll come up and I'll give these guys breakfast in their room. It is 9.38 a.m. I'm here with two platters of food for the cats. They're having homemade raw food with warm water mixed in and some crunchies. Who wants to eat? You guys hungry? All seven of them are out and about. Oh, Goldie almost rubbed up against me. Is Ringo? No, Ringo went underneath. There's a little Eva. There's Richard, Nancy. Sammy's up on the table. You guys hungry? You hungry? 
No, Richard just rubbed on me. Goldie almost stepped on my toe. You guys ready to eat? <laughs> Sammy's like on her hind legs. You guys ready to eat? Be nice, Sammy. Hey, Richard. Hey, Ringo. Okay, you want food? Who wants food? Goldie, rub on me. Who's gonna rub on me? Goldie, you gonna rub on me? Rub on me, Goldie. Go ahead, Ziggy. The goal is to get them to at least come closer to me and not be afraid. Okay, ready? You hungry? He's hungry. Okay. Alright. Oh, I got Goldie. I got Goldie. Okay. Let's eat, Goldie. Let's eat. Let's eat, Ziggy. Okay. There's a little Eva. Come on, Goldie. I got Goldie again. I gotta, like, lean into her, but she lets me. She lets me rub up against her. Be nice, everybody. We're gonna eat. Alright, I just gave them their plates. We have four on one platter, three on this platter. If they eat all that food, then I could give them, like, a can. So, this is Splashy's food. He did not eat it. Maybe he wants crunchies on it? I just put some crunchies on his food, so maybe he'll go eat it. I want to keep him here under observation so I can know what he's doing in the litter box. That's why I have the door shut. So, right now, all the cats are shut somewhere. Splash is shut in this room. Boo, Stella, and Simba are shut downstairs, and the kittens are shut in their room. It's actually nice. It's 10 a.m. I'm checking on Splash. It looks like he has not eaten his food, so I'm going to try with some canned food. The problem with trying to put something like apple cider vinegar in raw food is that the raw food, you know, it doesn't have a strong odor or flavor, so the apple cider vinegar probably really overpowers it. So I'm going to try it in some of the canned food. Here's Splash right now. He's on top of the cat tower. I just gave Splash some of this wellness gravies with bits of tuna and mackerel smothered in gravy. I figured maybe the tuna and mackerel will have a really strong smell. I did not give him a full teaspoon. I probably give him like half a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar and I topped it with like half of a squeeze up. So I'm gonna give him a chance to eat that. It's 10 o'clock now. I'll probably check back in another 15 minutes. So I was able to get Splash to eat a chicken churu with three drops of the apple cider vinegar in it. And he's laying on the bed right now. So I'm going to give him another chicken churu. He did not want to eat the tuna and salmon squeeze up. I think he just really likes the, uh, the chicken. So I'm going to give him another one. And what I did was I put some apple cider vinegar in this little dropper bottle. That way I could really control the dose much better. I forgot to mention that I also put some sardine dust on top. So these are some dried sardines that I crushed up on top. And maybe it helped mask the aroma of the apple cider vinegar. So Splash just finished the second chew room. I'm going to give him a third one. Maybe it helps with some of the dried sardines on top. Maybe he just likes the chew room better than the squeeze-ups. I don't know. Here's Splash. He's on the bed. Splash, you want another chew room? Here, I'll put it right next to you, okay? You want to eat that? Eat the chew room, Splashy. You could eat it. I'll be back in 15 minutes, okay? It's 12.30 p.m. and there's Boo. He is so happy. He is sunbathing by the windows in his room. Boo, you're so happy. Look at him. Good boy, Boo. You're a good boy. You're a good man, Boo, okay? You got your room back part of the day. Good man, Boo. I think there might be some kittens under the day sofa. Richard's walking around. Good job, Boo. You're a good boy. 
It's 1.30 p.m. Look at what's going on here. That's Simba. Simba's in Boo's room on the floor. Oh, I guess someone's under the day sofa. Someone just hissed at him. <laughs> He's getting up. He's like, okay, I don't need that. There's Splash. He's in the penthouse. How you doing, Splashy? You okay? I guess he's not using the litter box as much because he's just hanging out in the penthouse. So here's Boo by the windows. And there's Simba in the cat tower. Just like old times, right Simba? You smell the other cats. Here's Ringo. He's underneath the day sofa. How you doing, Ringo? How you doing, Ringo? You're very handsome. Handsome boy. Ringo's the only one under here. I wonder where the other cats are. Boo is so warm. He must love soaking up the sun. Because when I touch him, like, he is so warm because his black fur just absorbs all the sunshine and the heat. How you doing, Simba? He's watching Boo. Meanwhile, downstairs, there are four cats in the cat beds. So there's a cat in each cat bed on the couch, and there's a cat in the round cat bed on the floor. And I don't know where the rest are. I don't want to disturb them. So it looks like Goldie, Ziggy, Nancy on the couch, and then little Eva on the floor. And we just saw Ringo underneath the day sofa. So it means Richard and Sammy are somewhere else. There's Richard. He's on the sofa cushion. Mm, I don't know where Sammy is. Here's Stella, she's on one of the dining room chairs. She was helping me work for a while. I'm just taking a five minute break to check on the cats. It's 2.15 p.m. and look at Stella. She's in her castle. This is Stella's castle. Her bow is hanging on top of it. It's on top of this piece of litter box furniture. She looks very happy in her castle. She's laying on her pillow. It's 3 p.m. and Boo moved over to the day sofa. And Simba's back on top of the cat tower. He came down for a while, but he's back up there. Ringo's still underneath the day sofa. Hey, Splashy. It's 5.45 p.m. I just came in to check on Splash. He was on top of the cat tower when I came in. And I saw that he had used the litter box because there was a pile of litter. And I just scooped it. And look at this. Look. This is a, it's a decent sized pea clump. I mean, it's still smaller than like what the cats would normally do. But it's a lot bigger than the little you know, peanut sized clumps that I was scooping this morning. So this is good progress for Splashy. Yay, it looks like the apple cider vinegar worked. So for dinner today, the dinner locations have pretty much been reversed. So there are six of the kittens eating downstairs because this is where they've been all day. Um, the only one not down here is Ringo. He was under the day sofa all day, so I gave him a plate of food in the room. Here's Goldie. Eat your, eat your food, Goldie. So they're all eating except for Richard, and here's Richard. I think he's just too comfortable in this bed. He doesn't want to get out. Either that or he's just gonna, he's gonna wait till everyone else eats and then he'll eat what's left over. He says ladies first. All the girls are eating, except for, except for Goldie. What are you doing, Goldie? Don't you want to eat? So yesterday, Sammy literally pulled this toy out. Um, it was in a pile of stuff in the back room, and I had completely forgotten it was there. And then all of a sudden, I heard this bang, and I was like, what is that? And I came down here, 
and Sammy had pulled this toy out. Like, she literally pulled it out from wherever it was. I don't even know where it was, but I was like, oh, okay, you found it. Now, it did not have the centerpiece in it, which is a cardboard scratcher. That's what Goldie's laying on right now, um, because the previous cardboard scratcher had been completely used. So I had um, bought replacements, but I had not put the replacements in because there wasn't any room for this toy upstairs. Um, Boo has the other one that has like mirrors on it. It's a shinier one. He likes that one better. And I think I might have had this in Ditto's room for a while, but then it was just taking up too much space. So that's why I had it down here and just kind of thrown to the side because I was like, okay, I'll use that in the future. Well, Sammy decided she wants to play with it because of the, the ball, the white ball. Um, so when they decided to play with it, they were just like laying in it and it was like empty in the middle, but there are these like sharp pieces that stick up. So I said, let me find that cardboard, um, which I was able to locate and I put it in there and now they love laying on this. So Splash is eating in my room. He went into the room, I shut the door and he's eating in there. I don't know if he's eating, I gave him food. Also, he's back to sitting in the litter box. Um, so I've seen him sit in the litter box twice since he woke up. So he spent the majority of the day sleeping on top of the armor, which is good because he was not in and out of the litter box. But now that he's up and walking around, he's been back in and out of the litter box. So um, I put more of the apple cider vinegar in his food. Hopefully he'll eat his food. If he doesn't eat his food, I'm just going to continue to feed him churros and crunchies with apple cider vinegar and see how that does. So we know he does not have a blockage. So that is good because that is always a prime concern when dealing with male cats. They are prone to blockages in their urinary tract. And if a cat has a blockage in their urinary tract, it is very, very serious. They need to go to a vet or animal hospital right away. So at least we know for Splash, he doesn't have a blockage. So it's either a stress thing, making him feel like he wants to sit in the litter box and pee, or it could be a, a form of urinary tract infection, which is why he's getting the apple cider vinegar. And I also am not going to give him any crunchies. They say you want to make sure the cat's eating wet food. So other than just a few crunchies on top of his food, like I'm not going to give him a whole snack or crunchies tonight. They're just going to get wet food. It is 9 a.m. And Splash slept through the night in the living room. And then this morning he's having litter box issues again. He's still peeing. You know, I'm scooping out little peanut sized clumps of cat litter. Yeah, he's still having his issues. So I'm going to try to put as many supplements in his food as I can get him to eat this morning. I've already put fresh water in all the water bowls, scooped all the litter boxes, and vacuumed all the rugs. Let me show you what's going on here. So there was a white ball in this track yesterday. And this morning there's no white ball. So I don't know who got it out. I don't know where it is. But I just wanted to point that out. So hopefully it's somewhere down here. I don't know if anyone could have taken it upstairs. And um, it was kind of um, like a hard plastic ball. So I would think I would hear it. So I'm going to have to look for that. Also... I put the toy on for them to play with. So six of the kittens are down here. I don't know where Ringo is. I looked under the day sofa. He's not under the day sofa. I looked down here. I don't know where he is. I, I've seen six of the kittens today down here. They pretty much spent the whole night down here. They love it down here. They've, they've like taken over this whole downstairs area. I don't know where Ringo is though. So maybe he'll show up. So I just found Ringo. He's under the bed. I don't know. Maybe he was under the bed all night, but that's where he is now. It's 924 AM and I can't show them to you, but both Splash and Ringo are under the bed. They're not too far from each other. So Splash ate his food on the little tray that I have in the room uh, with the water bowl. So he came out and he ate, but Ringo was still under the bed. So then Ringo was on top of the cat tower when I came in the room with his food. Then he ran underneath the bed and I gave him his food under the bed. So right now, it sounds like Ringo's eating his food under the bed and Splash is there with him. So it could be that Ringo and Splash might end up being friends because they're both the scaredy cats. 
So I just gave the cats two platters of food down here. You can see there's three cats on each platter. If they finish all of that, I'll give them maybe like a can of food. But that should be plenty of food for them, so maybe if they finish that I won't give them anything extra. They're getting the homemade raw food with warm water mixed in, and then I put some crunchies in the middle. Because I know Nancy loves crunchies, I think some of the cats might like crunchies. So yeah, things have reversed in this house, and I had nothing to do with it. So it seems like these cats like being down here better than being upstairs. I have a lot of organizing that I'm going to need to do down here within the next few days if this is going to continue because they're like, getting into everything. So i got to figure a lot of stuff out. It's 9.54 a.m. Look at Splash. He's taking a bath on the bed, or he was. Ringo's trying to get past me to get out the door. And there's Boo. Boo's taking a bath on the day sofa. And that's either Goldie or Ziggy. It's 11 a.m. and here's Splash. He's on the bed. He seems to be doing better today than he was yesterday. He ate all of his breakfast and he just came up to me while I was working on my computer and got so many pets. Like, he got so many pets. He hasn't done that in a long time. Probably since the kittens have been allowed in and out of their room. That's like the last time that Splash came up to me to get like lots and lots of pets. And he did that today, so maybe he is starting to relax more. I feel like Boo is grooming himself less also now. Um, maybe having the kittens confined to that one room was stressing the cats out a lot. Maybe now that the kittens are pretty much allowed to roam around wherever they want, the cats are uh, relaxing more. Maybe as they all get to know each other, they're all relaxing more. Maybe as Splash and Boo are realizing the other kittens are not a threat, so they're relaxing more. I don't know, but I'm just making an observation. Look at this. It's Stella. She's in the cat condo. She never goes in this cat condo. This is a first for her. That is so cute. So I moved the cat condo here. It used to be by the window in between the cat towers. But I moved it here because, I don't know, I made like a little cat area with these ottomans. You can see the cats have been scratching on the ottomans. And then there's an arch here, and then I put a towel. They like to lay here. And look at this. Stella went inside this cat condo. The kittens have been going in and out of it. I guess Stella doesn't want to miss out. Maybe she's becoming a kitten again. It's 12.05 p.m. Here's Stella and Splash taking naps on the bed. I think Splash is faking. I don't think Splash is really sleeping. And I think this is Richard in the cat tower. Or is it Nancy? It might be Nancy. Do I see a white paw? Nancy! Nancy, Richard, is it Richard or Nancy? Who's up there? I kind of think it's Nancy, but it might be Richard. Here's Sammy. Today she's on the cat tower. Hey, Sammy. And here's Ringo. Ringo's underneath the day sofa today. Hello, Ringo. And there's three cats in the cat beds. And I see Nancy in the round bed on the floor, so that must be Richard upstairs. It's 1.35 p.m. Here's Stella. She's still on the bed where she was. There's Splash. He's still in the middle of the bed. And there's Boo. He's on the end of the bed. And there's Richard. These cats are learning how to get down from these cat towers. They're not very good at doing it yet. I think he wanted to jump on the bed, but he sees Boo there. Sometimes what happens is when they try to go to the level below, they kind of do a flip and then they kind of like fall off the whole cat tower. That's why they're still learning. I'm pretty sure Simba is up in the penthouse. 
I don't know what Richard thinks he's doing. Just stay there, Richard, okay? Just stay there. I don't want to move or go into the room because I don't want to scare him. And I don't want to, like, make him fly off of there and then scare the other cats. You're fine, Richard, okay? You're fine right there. I'd like to give a shout out to Abril, C.R. Barboni, and Tracy Cosgrove. Thank you so much for your patronage this month and your generous support. Thank you for watching this Lucky Farrell's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you'd like me to post more videos, and please make sure to check out these other videos that were selected especially for you.